Hi and welcome to the channel. So today I'm really excited to have a closer look at the Terra Nova Voyager 2 two-man tent. Now I've been wanting to get one of these tents for a while and now I've got it. I am super excited to have a closer look at it. Now I am obviously going to pitch this tent so we can have uh, a closer look but um, until I do that what I want to do is just talk a little bit about the tent and also talk about some of the specs. Now when it comes to the specs I'm going to read them off some of some notes I've made because there's just too many to remember. Also when I refer to the cost of the tent I'm going to be using uh, the currency in pounds because I'm here in the UK. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, now looking at the tent itself it comes in a waterproof drawstring bag like that. Uh, the total packed weight of this tent comes in at 1.99 kilograms uh, or four pounds six ounces. Um, so not the lightest but not the heaviest two-man tent out there. Um, this tent in its packed size here the length of the bag is 50 centimeters and the width of this bag is 15 centimeters. Now this tent has been around for 25 years and in that 25 years very little has changed in the design quite simply because it's been such a well-made tent. Um, apart from being well made this tent is as popular now as it was when it first came out so so this tent is still selling in bundles. Now the tent itself um, is a four season tent, so it's great for uh, all year round use. It's also a freestanding tent, so it's easy to move around if you need to. Now taking a closer look at some of the other specs, um, the outer fly sheet of the tent um, has a 30D nylon ripstop with a silicone and polyurethane coating, so nice and strong. And it has a hydrostatic head rating, which is your waterproof rating of 5,000. Now, in a previous video, I did mention here in the UK, and, and I stress only here in the UK, um, a company is allowed to state that something is waterproof if it has a hydrostatic head of at least 1,500. But um, like I said, that, that's just based here in the UK and other countries um, that might be different. But anyway, uh, 5,000 hydrostatic head for the outer, so more than waterproof. Uh, the inner tent has a 30D ripstop nylon, um, so that's nice and strong. Uh, the ground sheet is made from a 70D nylon with a polyurethane coating, so um, very strong, the, uh, the ground sheet, and that has a 10 thousand hydrostatic head so more than waterproof there um, now the size of the tent now i'm just going to be talking about the main living area of the tent this tent does have a, a, a small vestibule um, so we can have a look at that when it's set up but the uh the inner part of the tent the living area um the length of that is 206 centimeters in length so uh yeah a decent size length i think um, the width at the widest point as you get in the tent is 125 centimeters, so nice and wide there. Um, that narrows down to where you would put your feet, and that goes down to 90 centimeters, so still uh, more than enough room. Um, now, the main height of the tent, um, at the highest point, I should say, is 100 centimeters, so uh, plenty high enough for you to sit up in. And at the lowest point, it drops down to um, 64 centimetres. So obviously the, the tent is going gonna, is gonna to slope down and that'll be at the foot end. Um, now, the poles are made by DAC and they are featherlight poles. Now, DAC are arguably one of the best made poles on the market today. I know Hilliburg, um, if you haven't heard of Hilliburg, Hilliburg... Uh, make premium quality tents and they use DAC poles in all of their tents. Now these poles are 8.7 millimeters so um, more than strong enough um, for four seasons however keeping the the measurement down to 8.7 millimeters per pole that's just um, helping lower the weight a little bit as well however not jeopardizing 
uh, the strength of the pole. The pegs are made by terra firma, which uh, terra firma make very, very strong pegs, so no problem there with keeping your tent anchored down. Um, the guy lines um, are made by Dyneema, and these are Dyneema reflective. Now, Dyneema guidelines are on an average um, three times as strong as most guidelines. So really nice and strong. And the fact is that they are reflective, obviously uh, helps if you're looking at your tent or checking your guidelines during the night and it's dark, you know, being reflective, obviously you can see them and you won't or hopefully avoid tripping over them. Um, now, the cost of this tent is not cheap. When it first came out, it was selling for around 740 pounds. Um, however, doing some research, I found it um, as low as 500 pounds. So a massive difference in cost. Now there are some places on the net that are still selling it for the original 740. However, as I said, if, 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 you, if, if you have a good look around, you can find it closer to 500. Also, if you go onto these private selling sites, there was one the other day I had a look at, uh, a guy was selling it on one of these sites and he had used the tent once. It was mint condition um, and he was selling it for 450 pound. Um, and that was with a footprint. Um, incidentally, when you buy this tent, it doesn't come with a footprint as most tents uh, nowadays, uh, a footprint is, is an optional extra. Um, and the footprint um, is selling between 50 to 80 pound. But anyway, uh, this guy was selling his tent used once with a footprint and he was selling it for around 450. So for a four season well-made tent, I think it's an absolute bargain. But listen, that's just a, a few specs on the tent. Um, let's get the tent set up. Let's take a closer look and then we can um, talk some more. So, as you can see, the tent is now all set up. It took me just under 10 minutes. However, that was the first time I've set this tent up. Uh, I'm sure the more I do it, the quicker I'll get at it. But it really was very, very simple. I uh, put down the footprint. I then put in, started putting up the inner tent with the poles. That was really easy because the poles and the pole sleeves are all color coded so you obviously just thread through the colored poles uh, to the colored sleeves um, I then put the outer cover over the tent and then obviously made sure everything was anchored down so it really was very very simple now you can see the two guy lines there now you can add another two guy lines to the front um, as I come in here, I'll just show you. You can put another guy line on there, and there is another one the other side. Now, for some odd reason, when you buy this tent, they don't give you the four guy lines, only the two, but you can buy a couple for not very much. Um, so that's, that's not a problem. Now, as we come around the front, you can see the vestibule of the tent, which I'm gonna show you some pictures of that in a minute, as well as the inner doors of the tent so you can see the different options you've got however taking a closer look at the tent you can see it's an aerodynamic shape so that's gonna help you against the wind the rain and the snow um, especially when you come here at the back you can see where the poles cross over that's designed to help stability in uh, more extreme weather but yeah simple tent um, easy to put up uh, nice looking so there you go So let's have a look inside this tent. So decent size entrance to get in. Now when looking around the tent it's not a bad size tent. Uh, to be honest um, you could get two people in this tent but I would say it's uh, it would be better suited to 
a one person tent uh, with a bit of extra room. Uh, right down the back, you can see a little net pocket. There's a little bit of storage there. And as you can see, just down the bottom there, the outer tent comes down pretty close to the ground, but leaves just a little gap uh, to act as a bit of ventilation to let some air in. Um, it's a it's a decent height. It drops down a little bit at the back, but then comes up quite a lot here at the top. You've got a triangular pocket here on the left. And you've got another triangular pocket here on the right. There's nowhere to hook a lamp, but you could put your lamp in one of these pockets. Uh, the door is on the left. Obviously, you have the outer midge net, and then you have the internal door, which just zips all the way around. Um, so, yeah, um, quite nice inside here. As I said, uh, a touch small for two people, I would say, but um, decent for uh, one person. Let me swing the camera around, and then I'll show you the vestibule. So here's the outer vestibule. Obviously you can see I've got the footprint down, but apart from that, you can clearly see it is a really decent sized vestibule. Plenty big enough to store backpacks, day packs, stoves, boots, or whatever you want to store that you don't want in the tent. I've kept the outer door closed to give you an, a better idea of what it's like. But yeah, uh, a really generous in size and um, also a a nice bonus having a decent sized vestibule on your tent because it adds to the size of the tent. You can keep your inner door open and uh, and with your outer door closed, it just gives you that little bit of extra room in the tent. Right, I'm just gonna swing the camera around. All right, I just wanted to show you what the height of the tent is like. And this is the highest part of the tent. Now the tent roof does slant down towards the back. Um, but the highest point is is quite high. I'm six foot two with a cap on and I'm only just touching the roof. So if you're below six foot two, you're gonna have plenty of room to sit up at the highest point. So uh, yeah, guys, that's the tent. Um, I haven't tested it fully for a night out. I'm looking forward to doing that in a future video so we can see how it fares in maybe rain, wind, snow. It depends what the weather's doing at the time. We can also look at things like condensation, etc., and ventilation, but that I'll have to cover in a future video. All I can say on, on those topics is that for people that I know that have had this tent and have tested it, they've said that it's um, stood up remarkably well in all weathers. Condensation um, hasn't been a big issue. Um, to be honest, with condensation, you're going to get it in, in any tents, whether it's a cheap tent or a really expensive tent. I think by um, trying to eliminate com condensation, um, the best thing you can do is um, have as much ventilation as possible. But as I said, we'll cover all that when I uh, test it out um, in the field, shall we say. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go inside and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this tent. So I'll, uh, I'll bring you back in a bit. So before I end this video, I just wanted to give you my final thoughts on the Terra Nova Voyager 2 tent. Uh, firstly, uh, I absolutely love the tents, and, and I'm not just saying it because um, I've, I've got one, but I think a tent that has been around for 25 years plus, um, that has had very little change in design because it has been so well made, um, so basically lost the test of time. Um, and still sells in bundles today and is still enjoyed by many people. I think that's testament to a great tent. Um, so I don't think you can fault the tent um, in that sense. Um, the fact is that it's a freestanding tent. It's a four season tent. It's well made, obviously. Uh, it's relatively light. Um, I, I think it ticks so, so many boxes. Um, you know, it, it, it also looks great. Um, 
the the only thing which i would say to a degree is the price um obviously if you're paying that top end price of 740 that is that is that is uh, pretty steep however as i said you can get it for a lot cheaper now um and if you are going to pick this tent up for say around 500 pound um and even if you spent an extra 60 to 80 on a footprint um I think nowadays for a good four season tent, you're going to be spending between five to six hundred pounds at least. Um, you know, maybe there are other great four season tents out there that don't cost as much. I don't know. I'd have to look into it. Um, but speaking about this tent, um, I think it's a fantastic all round tent. Now, um, before. I end this video I also just wanted to add that you know if you're thinking about buying a one-man tent or a two-man tent or a three-man tent etc I urge you to look at the next size up now the reason I say that is that um, a while ago I bought a Hilliburg Nello 3 tent and a lot of my friends had the Nello 2 which is fantastic but when I took a closer look and compared the Nello 2 to the Nello 3 um, first of all there wasn't a lot in price wise uh, there wasn't a, a, a lot of difference in price I should say um, but more to the fact there wasn't a lot of weight in it. Um, it there was only an extra 200 grams in weight for the Nello 3 however there was a lot more room now 200 grams in weight extra I mean hey uh, I mean that's the equivalent of probably two chicken breasts it's really not a lot of weight and if you're really hell-bent on weight you could always shade weight off somewhere else However, what I'm getting at is that I understand that a lot of people say get a smaller tent to save on weights. Um, but I think if you like a bit more space, like myself, then I think for a not much extra weight and not much extra cost in some cases, um, going to the next size tent is massively beneficial. Um, also, I think if you're ever caught out in really, really bad weather, I was a few years ago and um, I had to spend, you know, I think it was about seven to 10 hours in the tent during the day because the weather was so bad. And I can quite honestly say having that extra room in the tent really made that time spent in the tent just that much easier. Um, so, like I say, if you're going to buy a one man, check out the two man. If you're two man, check out the three man and so on. Because as I said, you might be quite surprised how little the difference is in weight um, and in price. However, how big a difference there is actually in the room. But anyway, I'll leave you with that. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any comments with regards to the Terra Nova Voyager 210, please leave them in the comments below. I'll read them all and I will reply to all of them. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a nice thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. Um, but until the next video, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you soon.